our first stop in the Casentino area is at Stia. Stia is a small village on the hills and um, here in the center of the old town we have a, a factory that dates back uh, to 1831 and now it hosts a museum that shows the history of the wool material was uh, produced in this area that is called Panno Casentino, that means Casentino material. Um, but the story of this material goes back to the 14th and 1400. So let's go inside the museum and we can find out something more about this, this product. The history of the Pano Casentino is as old as the first settlements in this area. As we know, the Etruscans and the Romans were wearing already something very similar. The importance of the wool material in the Middle Age was so fundamental for the economy in central Italy that its production was controlled by the Florentine guilds, which imposed both the features and the colors of the fabrics so as not to create competition with their more valuable and sophisticated counterparts. In fact, the Casentino cloth was very tough, rough and hairy, suitable for the needs of those who were forced to live outdoors or constantly on the road. And since time immemorial, the ritual suit for carters, farmers and wayfarers. The first part of the museum displays the tools associated with the processing steps related to the artisan tradition that depart from the shearing of the sheep, the wool carling, spinning up of the large looms. The explanation of this development in medieval time can be found in some characteristics of the territory. The presence of the raw material, the abundance of running water needed for almost every phase of the production, the enormous availability of wood to heat the containers in which the wool was dyed, and in the presence in the ground of a particular type of clay used during the fulling process. And don't forget the very low cost of workforce at that time. By the way, the very pioneer of this activity, though, were the monks, living at the end of the 11th century, first in the Camaldoli Hermitage and later on in La Verna. We know that within these religious communities, weaving was part of the daily routine so as to be self-sufficient clothing-wise. In the 1800s, with the advent of mechanized production, processing of the tissue undergoes a great transformation, and the factory becomes the epicenter of social life in the village of Stia. This factory, at the beginning of the 19th century, soon became famous for the quality of its wool fabric, so as to become first the official supplier for the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, and later on for the Italian Kingdom, both for the Royal House of Savoy and for the National Army. The production went on until the 1980s, but after being abandoned for a few years, in 2000, the factory was restored to host the museum that we are visiting today. The museum traces the history of this place, deepening its social role, and exposes some of the documents related to its uh, activities, like samples, uh, register books, and uh, records of injuries, and things like that. In the second half of the 19th century, the Casentino fabric was weighed to obtain covers for draft animals. These coats were hardened to the point to become similar to the felt. Although already waterproof, the manufacturers decided to replace an ancient dye, the robia, with products obtained by synthesis. And by mistake, they obtained the red-orange color that soon turned into a classic trademark. History says that some cart drivers began to sew his coat or cape using the orange fabric stolen from his horse. This bright color pleased the ladies from Florence, and soon the Casentino fabric from the bony shoulders of the Franciscan monks migrated to the ones of the upper classes. The suit in Casentino cloth was packaged in double-breasted style with martingale and fox neck, symbol of elegance and refinement, perfect for hunting and horseback riding. Fashion we know comes and goes, but the extreme quality of the soft material has been psychically rediscovered by the manufacturers that never cease to appreciate its unique feature. And at the end of the tour, I bought myself a Casentino hat. Nice, no? Yeah, it's quite nice. So, this is um, about it for today. Behind here we have the store where you can buy all the products that are made out of the Casentino material. And now we go for lunch, but follow us because we have a lot of other things interesting from the Casentino era. See you. Bye. -bye. Bye.